Let's take this case and take you through the whole design process, incorporating all the different uh, tools that you have available to you in the design tab. Uh, I'll start at the margination step where we proceed to defining the insertion axis. Now this is very critical. You must make sure you place the uh, preparation in the correct axis for the model where distal is truly distal and your margin here on the buckle is perpendicular to the uh, buckle uh, wall itself. Now when we click on OK, uh, we set the path of insertion at this step and we want to get a proposal. You can either click on the uh, chevron arrows here to the right in the step menu or you can click on the design tab itself in the face menu. As soon as you click on this, the software will start reading the adjacent teeth so it can derive its anatomy from those and it will read the uh, opposing information as well to give you the best possible proposal based on the information you provided with your optical impressions. Now, this is the uh, original proposal. This is the very first thing that Biogeneric proposed, and I already noticed that's a little bit deficient on the facial. In fact, I feel like it's not in the proper alignment within the arch form. So the very first thing I like to do is I'll click on Display Options, turn on the upper jaw here, and I'm going to take a quick look and see how it articulates with the opposing. Let's magnify this uh, restoration here and you can see how it's a little bit deficient to the facial. So I'm going to move this to the facial and have it line up with the uh, cusp tips of the adjacent teeth much uh, better than it is in this initial proposal. So let's magnify this and we'll click on the restoration. We'll right click on this and we will choose the uh, uh, rotate and move tool and let's grab the position tool. I click on the position tool and now I can see uh, exactly how uh, this restoration is going to be uh, proposed when I move the restoration to the facial. So there's a good view. I'll just uh, grab the restoration, move it to the facial, and you can see if I go too far, I'll have some heavy contacts from the opposing cusp tip. And right here is where I wanted to, uh, wanted to place the restoration so it lines up with the uh, correct uh, alignment of the cusp tips of the adjacent teeth. Now, if I need to make any rotations, remember, uh, we can actually move this to the mesial a little bit more. So we're still in the uh, uh, move step, we can just uh, grab onto the restoration with a left click and drag it to the mesial and close that embrasure. If I needed to, I could use the rotate tool or right click again. This time I'll use, instead of position, I'll use the rotate tool and I will spin this restoration a little bit towards the mesial. So I'll grab that axis and spin it to the mesial and tilt it a little bit that way. Be careful again. If I want to move the model, I can left click on the model and move it around so I can get a different view but if you place your cursor on the sphere itself and you left click now you're actually activating the features of the software and you'll be distorting your restoration so be careful when you're toggling between trying to move the restoration uh, within the model or trying to move the restoration itself on the model now once I've done positioning and moving this uh, and rotating this restoration into place I'm going to go ahead and activate some of the other tools, namely let's go to the form tool. Actually before I do any, use any of the smooth or form add and remove features, I'll just grab the anatomical or the circular uh, shape tools. I'll click on circular here and what I want to do is I want to buff up my lingual here. So what I'll do is I'll grab uh, the tool here and I can now move this to the lingual and fill in areas, any deficiencies I might have. I can even migrate over to the two-directional view and now grab certain areas and just really infinitely work on those areas if I need to. Uh, if I want to move this cusp tip a little bit higher, I can just left click on the cusp tip and move it up and have it line up with the cusp tips of the adjacent teeth. If I want to work on the contacts, what I'll do is I'll uh, click on display options and I'll just remove the lower jaw completely and I can hold my uh, uh, scroll button down and uh, move it up and down to magnify the view to my restoration. So here I'm still in the uh, uh, shape tool, the two-directional circular tool, and I have a setting of this size, and now I can grab this uh, wall here and move it to the mesial if I want to expand or, or broaden my contact like I did here. Let's take a look at the distal tooth, uh, distal of the tooth, and you can see there's a little bit of deficiency here, so I can grab this uh, tool here again and expand and increase the contacts. I don't like this uh, little square look here, so the easiest way for me to address that is to click on uh, the tool wheel, activate the smooth feature, and I'm going to go ahead and run this smooth feature uh, to this square wall here. I'm going to pick a size much smaller. Remember, you can pick the size by right-clicking and moving your trackball up and down, and that sunburst effect tells you exactly the area you're going to be affecting. You can also do that from uh, the size menu over here. So I'll go ahead and place the smooth tool on this area and get rid of that square look that we had 
and really nicely blend it in so I have the proper emergence profile for this restoration. You can even run the smooth tool all across your restoration. I'll show you this view from above. Let's uh, turn on the lower jaw back on and you can just run your smooth tool across this uh, restoration. Let's pick a size much bigger than this, uh, a bit smaller than this I mean, and just run the smooth tool all across the the periphery of the restoration and this restoration virtually comes out pre-polished. If you want a little bit heavier occlusal contact you can use the uh, form tool here and add, use the add feature here and just place a little bit of ceramic to buff up that area or conversely you can use a shape tool it's a matter of preference if you want to establish more occlusal contact points uh, with the restoration. So this was a quick overview to show you how you can use all the differing tools to quickly render a proposal that is to your satisfaction.